And who would like to get started, please? Uh, Madam Chair, I'm willing to begin. Thank you. And I want to thank you for, I know you're the last, you know, uh, bunch of the witnesses. Um, I want to thank you for being patient as we provided, you know, the, the hearing and the testimony, and we're paying attention, so you can get started. Certainly. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I'm Jonathan Alexander, and I'm an attorney and counsel for the Maryland Family Institute, and I stand in opposition to this bill, 283, and the plan that it puts forward for additional funding for the physical deconstruction and revision of perfectly good bodies as an alleviation to the distress resulting from gender dysphoria. And I'm using gender dysphoria as it is listed here in the bill. I'm also narrowing on the text that refers to puberty blockers and other treatments to suppress the development of sex characteristics as also being wrong. You know, our bodies are created to naturally grow and to thrive especially those of adolescents who have everything they need within them to develop into full adults. It is inconsistent with the natural blossoming of adolescence into adulthood to fund hormones and puberty blockers that stop and irreversibly destroy the nat body's natural ability to allow adolescents to grow into adulthood. And I'm aware of the statistics and the stories of individuals that are promoting this. But I'm also aware of the growing number of statistics and stories of individuals now hoping that they had never undergone sex reassignment surgery, now hoping that they had never taken puberty blockers, now wishing that someone came alongside them on their journey and sat down with them and told them that they were beautiful in the body that they were born in, and that irreversible surgery, puberty blockers are not the way to help them deal with the realities of gender dysphoria that it would be better to encourage congruity between the mind and the body than to perform the severance of perfectly good working body parts or putting a hormonal stop on the natural development of adolescence into adulthood, where, of course, an untold number of struggles will appear but can also dissipate when proper attention and care is given to the heart of the matter. For those reasons, I urge you to issue an unfavorable report on HB 283. Thank you for your testimony today. Next, what is your name? My name is Ayo Kimathi, and I'm here to testify on House Bill 283. I call this bill the Jeffrey Dahmer Bill because in many ways, this is state-sponsored psychopathology. What I'm saying is that this is the second phase or the phase that follows and builds off what I brought here so I could share with the committee so you could see the psychopathological grooming that's occurring in the school system in PG County. So what we have seen, and I have it here so you can show it, we had people go into the school system and actually get into the libraries where the children have access to books. In those books, it teaches the children that they can pick whatever gender they want to. They can go whatever the direction they want to. So just like a pedophile would come and prepare a child for sexual abuse, we now have psychological sexual abuse through the state, sponsored and funding into the school system, teaching the children the first stage, you can do anything with your gender. This bill would be the second phase, going past sexualizing the children into psychopathology, where you're now saying self-mutilation of the child is available, sponsored by the state, to chop the child and mutilate the child. Groomed through the school system, now coming through the state. When we are not putting the necessary funding into financial literacy, vocational training, uh, agriculture, we're talking about, we're about to have a food crisis in this country. Maryland is one of the great states in terms of land to grow food. Why aren't we teaching that in school? And we're not putting money into preventing sexual abuse of children into the school and teaching children to be aware of sexual abuse. So what we're saying here is to take the taxpayer dollars and instead of fighting child sexual abuse, now we're talking about funding child sexual abuse. This is nothing less than insanity. Uh, right now, the last thing I want to say, because I think it's very important, they have something out here called MAP, called Minor Attracted Persons, 
where they are trying to legalize and normalize pedophilia. This is really what we're talking about, and it's the second stage past that into pure psychopathology. I urge you to fight against this bill. Thank you. Are there any questions for this panel? Is there any way I can give these to anyone on the panel so you can have the information for yourself? You can leave it at the desk and staff will get it. Okay. okay. Because Thank you. there's just right there where you are. You can leave okay. it right there. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, thank you. Any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you so much for coming. We appreciate it. Next, we have actually a, we have four virtual witnesses before we're done with the bill. Dana Schultz and Vince McAvoy. Good afternoon, Thank you so sir. much, committee. <clears throat> um, legislator moves things stepwise and such things, so I want to detail for some of our new delegates, some of the, the issues. Uh, delegates Tomlinson and Jalega, I point to uh, HB 132 in 2021, which was the camel's nose under the tent that proliferated and allowed this bill to come about in 2022, when it did not pass because it didn't have enough votes. Most liberal state and union couldn't pass this bill then because they know that the veil covering these issues has been lifted. An article was released last week from a Missouri transgender mutilation shop where lesbian working for that shop outed the horrible methods these butchers use on children and others. Um, so that they call themselves doctors or therapists, it's meaningless. Um, the movement has been promoted by Planned Parenthood whose view of children as abortion is okay, which is to say they're not caregivers. Uh, when Hopkins in my city backs us, understand they all but fired the chair of their psych department back in 2015 in the name of profits and wokeness. Hopkins has a wokeness litmus test it uses in its organization. Um, also, 50 trans folks are testifying on bills throughout our country. You should know that as you're reading testimony lawmakers, that they're going state to state and doubling and tripling and quadrupling up on these bills. Uh, there are over 300 bills to stop this transgender madness. 60% of states are enacting such bills. Three states just this month, the band are made it possible to sue these transgender mutilation practitioners. I'm rushing because the committee cut my mic last year. But it, I want to say that if not for censoring, it's happened to me last year, and on platforms like Twitter and YouTube, this cult of transgenderism would have been aborted the moment the first parent spoke up in shock. Ultimately, this is a cult propagating body mutilation sponsored by medical liars who joined with state Democrats alarm that transgender activists would threaten primarying them. This is detailed last year in April. I have those if you want to see them. An inspection of, of Kaiser's timeline details the threats and also shows how- Sir, you have to wrap up. Oh, thank you, Delegate, I will. Uh, shows how these, this bill was used as a litmus test for her district in appointing new lawgivers. I want to say that the next steps on this is malpractice. Sir, Next it is, your Arkansas time is up. Okay. Sir, your time okay, is up. You. Please wrap up. Thank Virtual you. We recipients to sue the, these practitioners for mutilation, and I am available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for this witness? Seeing none, thank you for being with us today. We appreciate it. You have a great day. Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Doug. My pleasure.